So how do narcissistic or toxic people text? How do they communicate via text or email? You know, we're the, the texting habits of narcissistic people. If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist and welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. Okay, welcome back, folks. Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope y'all like the new intro. Just to look, look, the intro is just a tester, just a test intro. <laughs> um, I appreciate y'all being here, though, y'all. But seriously, so how do narcissistic people, toxic people, text message y'all? We're texting habits of narcissistic people. So this video is inspired by a video. Uh, I saw the thumbnail for a video from uh, I think his name is uh, Dinesh. He goes by. Uh, uh, the narc survivor. I think it's narc survivor. Uh, narc, narc, abu narc abuse, narc abuse coach. That's what his name is. I didn't watch his video. I just saw the thumbnail. I was just like, okay, I'm gonna let me do a video from the perspective of a narcissist or how narcissistic people text. Cause I, I, I'm a narcissist. I know how I text. I know how I respond. And just let me preface this by saying just because you text or respond this way doesn't mean that you're a narcissist, y'all. Maybe a little toxic, little, little, little dash, a little salt bay of toxicity but it doesn't mean that you're a narcissist. Um, so, narcissistic people, y'all, a lot of a lot of narcissists don't read long messages that have a condescending tone to them, that have a, that have the, the, the slight aura or slight whiff of accountability, <laughs> accountability, the whiff of accountability mixed into it, you know? So that's why I tell people, like I'm talking to people, I'm doing my one-on-ones over Zoom, I'm doing my group coaching sessions and whatnot. I tell people, I say, hey, look, don't bother sending them a long-winded text message, especially when y'all are arguing and fussing and fighting, because they're not going to read it. They're, they're going to gauge the tone of it, the first and last, look, th this is how I gauge the tone of stuff. If somebody were to send me, if me and somebody are arguing, and they send me a long-winded message, I'm going it, 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 like I'm going to look at the first sentence and the last sentence to gauge the tone and determine whether or not I want to actually read it. You know, whether or not this text message is worth reading because I'm not I'm not trying to get held accountable. I know what I did wrong. I don't need you to rub it in. I don't need to hear about it again in long-winded form. If I got to scroll the screen to get to the bottom of the message, I don't want I don't want to do that. Especially if we're arguing and fussing and fighting or we're or we are both not communicating well or I'm just ignoring you and you know that I'm ignoring you. I'm not going to respond to it anyway because that gives me the power. You message me, right? You message me. So I have the power now. I know I don't have to message you back. I don't have to message you back now because you message me. You still obviously care because you sent this message. I don't care if the message is a breakup text message or whatever it is, or a text message you say you want to divorce. It's long winded. I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to respond to it, but especially because I know the tone is bad. If I read the first sentence and it's a welcoming sentence, like I love you so much. I might read that for some supply. I might read them. They'll read a long message. If it has a good tone to it, you may if it has a good, a good aura to it. They'll read a long message then. But it depends on the mood, y'all. That's why I just tell you, if you're gonna text a narcissist and you're if you're in a bad mood, start it off with something something uh <laughs> something endearing. Don't start it off with like, hey, first off, don't start it off with go Google the song. Uh, if you don't know who Tupac Shakur is, go Google Tupac Shakur. Google Google the song Hit 'em Up. Don't start a message, a text message off with the first line from Hit 'em Up. If you don't know what, what hit him up said, that's why I beep, 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 beep. It's a bunch of cuss, mess, cuss words, you know, hit him up. <laughs> um, but yeah, start it off with the tone, a, a good tone, like something, something endearing, something that, that's going to make them smile as opposed to make them frown. Cause they're not going to read it, y'all. They're not, they're not going to read. Very rarely would they read the entire message and get the point that you're trying to communicate to them. You know, very rarely they're going to do that, you know, and if they do read it, the next, the, the next type of stuff that they, they'll do, if they do read a long message or they do respond to you from any message that you sent, they'll just send a short, uh, short, dismissive response. One word response. K. Okay. You might send something pouring your heart out to them. Like just you're hurt. You're born to make it work. You just want an apology. You're willing to do whatever it takes. And they just send one letter. K. Okay. okay. An emoji. Thumbs up. 
Or you mean just an exclamation point or something like that. Or they might just, if you had an iPhone, I don't know if they do this on droids now, but if you have an iPhone, they'll just like the, uh, they'll just like the message. They won't even respond to it, y'all. Short responses or the emoji. Being dismissive, invalidating what you have sent. Like you took the time, effort, and energy to send this long-winded message or email and they just responded with an emoji, <laughs> you know, or just by liking it or not responding at all. Like I said, they go through, they skim it. I skim mess. I, I skim it for mean stuff. Like I, I, I skim it for the tone. You know, the tone matters when you're talking to narcissistic people. So understanding how to send a message to them can help you out, y'all. Because like I said, don't start it off with the anger. If you got to send a message with some oomph, don't start it off with anger because they're not going to read it, y'all. I promise you they're just going to dismiss it. Send it off like, look, I care about you so much. Then get them. You know what I mean? Don't, just, <laughs> don't bait them in and then, <laughs> then <laughs> bait them in. Reel them in with the, uh, the I care about you so much. And then, then beat them up uh, later on in the message. Uh, but yeah, they'll send the short dismissive responses to you to make you feel, to invalidate you and whatnot, y'all. Yeah. But the thing about the, the thing about the crazy narc, the th not crazy narc, the thing about narcissistic people is, y'all, the next text message habit, it's going to be like, they don't want to read long messages, but I'd be damned if they won't send them. If a narcissist has something on their mind, a toxic person has something on their mind, they're going to send you a long, they, 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 they will send you a long winded message and they expect you to read every sentence. You know, they expect you to read every sentence. Now, a narcissist, if they read a long, if they do read a long message, they'll skim it and only respond to one part of it. They expect you to respond to every single part of the messages that they, that they send to you every single part of the email that they'll send to you like they'll skim it and give you one word responses or just respond to one little part of it okay i'll see you i'll see you at seven they'll ignore everything else okay i'll pick my son up at six they'll ignore everything else they'll respond to that one part what you wish what you typically should do if you respond to a narcissist but like they expect you to respond to every single piece of it like they expect a they expect you to write a damn dissertation <laughs> of how they are feeling or how they are going about things. They expect that from you right there. You know, they expect it from you right there and just in that space and even in that dynamic. They expect you to do that. They expect it to come from you. They expect that from you. They expect you to break it down. Even though, like I said, even though they won't respond to you, they absolutely expect you to respond to them. Like in, in dissertation form, but long, they want something from you. You know what I mean? But a narcissistic person, like I said, if they send you a short message or if they send you a long message or you send them one, they'll give you a short response. You know, they'll pick one piece of it and respond to that one piece as opposed to give you responding in like I said to everything to the most important part. They will respond to trigger war words in messages. Like they will respond to something that they they they, they, they don't agree with in the message. They'll read through the whole message. And you might be making a lot of points, but something that they don't agree with and something that they feel like is misstated, they'll respond to that. You know what I mean? Like if you say something like seven, seven days a week, you treat me horribly. They're like, no, seven. I only see you five days a week. So that's right there is a lie. You see, I only, I'm only around you five days a week. So you line right there. You look at you missing, look at you misrepresenting time. They'll focus on something that they feel like is not true or they just try to play, end up playing the victim in that circumstance right there, y'all. That's what happens right there. You know, but narcissistic people right here, y'all, if you, if, now, if you are ho holding them accountable and you, the power lies in your hand, like if they're new, if they have done something to you and you're done with them, right, they'll continue to blow your phone up. They'll message you, they'll email you, they'll just, they'll try to overwhelm you to respond to them. They'll be begging and pleading for you to respond to them, right? But here's the kicker. They'll beg and plead, please respond to me. I miss you. I'm sorry I made a mistake. I won't do it again. I promise you. I promise I won't do it again. Please respond. And then when, if you finally respond to them, when or if you, re you finally respond to them, if you respond to them, some of them, will, some of them will go dark on you. That's crazy, isn't it? When you respond to these long-winded messages, sometimes they will go dark on you. Like you respond, you'll finally respond. They'll be begging you to talk to them and then you'll talk to them and then they'll, then they'll stop responding to you. That means that the power has shifted from you to them. Now they are in control. Now they're in the driver's seat right there. Now they control the, the communication. 
And that's why I tell people, just like, if you are no contact, stay no contact, y'all, if possible. Because once you respond to them, the power goes to them. Yes, the power goes to them. I know it sounds just so rudimentary, but like the power absolutely goes to them. You know, that's what that, that, that's where it gets to right there. Like the power goes to them. Like they'll beg you to respond, and once you respond, they feel like, okay, I got them now. I got them now. Now they're still interested in me. Now I don't have to respond. They, they now I finally cracked through their no contact shield. I'm inside of their shield. I'm inside of their bubble. Now I don't have to respond to them, or I can take my time to respond to you. You see, that's why I would say you stay, if you get you are no contact, stay no contact because it helps you heal. It helps you stay in power. It helps you stay in control. You know, because they'll beg, they'll I'm saying that they'll beg and beg and beg and plead you to respond, to break no contact, to contact them because they're hurting, they're screaming, they're text, they're, you know, they'll get their friends and family members to text you. They'll do a lot of weird things, text message, email wise, y'all, to get you to break no contact. And then once you do, they might go dark on you because now the power lies in their hands. You know, and now you might now you might be double texting them trying to get them to respond. Now they begged you to respond. Now you did. Now they're going dark on you. Now you're double texting them. So I I thought you wanted to talk. Now you're ignoring me. Wow, I see how it is. Now they got you. It's a game. Narcissist like it's like playing you remember the old Nokia phones? Y'all might be too young for this. The old Nokia phones where the only thing you could do on it was make calls and send a message and play snake. That's what it is right there. They playing snake with you. You know what I mean? They're playing snake, eating little dots up. The snakes are getting the snake is getting longer. You know? <laughs> it's just in that space right there. But you know, you have to empower yourself, y'all. Like, don't fall into the trap of getting in these text message conversations. Because like they'll have you angry as hell through text messages, y'all. They'll be texting you around your friends and family, trying to like dog they they use their text messages to dog whistle you as well, y'all. They'll send you. They'll try to trigger you through text messages while you're around your friends and family because it's not verbal communication. We're not verbally communicating. I'll send a a little. I'll send something that makes you angry, and then I'll just sit back and wait. I'll just sit back and chill. You know, I'll sit back and chill now because you're angry because you're upset because I got you now. You know what I mean? That's how it goes right there. Now you're angry. Now you're upset. Now you're hurting. But now I win because like now you're reacting in front of people. That's how narcissistic people can use their text messages to dog whistle or trigger you, you know, covertly trigger you in order to get a reaction from you in front of people. So be very wary of that as well, because they'll do things like that. They'll use their phones or the text messages to covertly trigger you in front of people to make you look crazy, to get a reaction from you. You know, that happens. So be very wary when you're texting narcissistic people, especially when you're in the mood and you out in public. Or not even in public. You be at home, they can do it. You know, that's weird. They'll give you the silent treatment, but they'll send you a text message, which sets you off. They'll give you a silent treatment, and they, like I said, they I'm just they use text messages. Like you, know, but this is true for most people, though. They they most people will text what they don't say. You know, texting is just a, an informal form of communication that they can use to text you and not, and not necessarily say that they communicate with you. Meanwhile, anyway, y'all, thank y'all for tuning into another episode. I truly appreciate every single one of y'all. Make sure y'all uh, check out my kids book and whatnot on Amazon. Stay tuned for more. Like and subscribe. But to whom this is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental healness rock star and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos in my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids book. Remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.